So most of you are familiar with how the AP Stylebook works, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a quick review. Looking at the table of contents, you'll see the style book is broken up into a number of sections. We have the basic A to Z listing of all the capitalization, abbreviation, usage, and so on. You've got social media guidelines, guidelines specifically for food, for businesses, for sports, for punctuation. So you may have to look in a couple of different sections to know what you're looking for. So we're going to take a look at five sentences that need to be adjusted for AP style. So let's look at the first sentence. Dr. Bob White examined Governor Bill Paid and told him that he should prepare Lieutenant Governor I am ready to take over the reins of the state. One of the keys with AP style is you have to know when you have to look things up. So let's look at this first sentence. You see doctor spelled out. So should doctor be spelled out? Let's look. So you can see here, there's an entire reference for doctor in how it's used. And you'll notice the first line it says, use DR period in the first reference as a formal title before the name of an individual who holds a doctor of dental surgery, a doctor of medicine, a doctor of optometry, so on and so forth. So that means that instead of D-O-C-T-O-R, we should have DR period Bob White. The next thing we should look at is how we should write governor. So we go to the G's. And you see an entry on governor. Capitalize and abbreviate governor, G-O-V period, or governors, G-O-V-S period, when used as a formal title before one or more names. And then you may also want to check the titles entry, but that gives us everything we need. So governor should be capitalized G-O-V period. Then lieutenant governor. How do we write that? Well, let's start by looking under L. Lieutenant Governor, capitalize and abbreviate as LT period, GOV period. Perfect. So we need to, instead of spelling that entirely out, we need to put that as an abbreviation. Now, our Lieutenant Governor has initials instead of a full first name. So how do we write the initials? Let's start with I. Sometimes you have to look in a couple of places to find what you need. Sometimes it'll be easy to find. Here we go, initials, use periods and no space when an individual uses initials instead of a first name. So it should be I period, M period, without a space. And that covers the four um, AP style questions we need to look at in the first sentence. So let's look at the second example. Air traffic controllers at the Boston airport are seeking a raise. First thing that looks a little strange is the question of whether or not air traffic controllers needs to be hyphenated. So let's start there. So air traffic controller, no hyphens. So take the hyphens out of that. The next question is Boston Airport correct? So let's look at the airport. You do capitalize the name of the airport but the name of the airport is in fact not Boston Airport. So if we look down here, um, where it says explicitly, do not make up names, however, there is no Boston Airport. You would say Boston lowercase airport, because it is the airport in Boston, would be acceptable unless you wanted to use the proper name, which is Logan International Airport. And so you just need to check, make sure that you have the proper names for things and ca proper capitalizations in AP style. Let's look at the third example. 10 people took the test, another 20 refused. So the first thing we should look at is the question of the digits. When you start a sentence with a number, do you use the numbers or do you spell them out? So the first thing we need to look up is numbers. Okay, so you'll notice there's a very long entry for numerals because there are a lot of rules associated with numbers. One of the first things we need to look at is sentence start. 
Spell out the numeral at the beginning of a sentence. If necessary, recast the sentence. There's one exception, a numeral that identifies a calendar year. So our current writing of one zero people took the test is wrong. And in fact, we would say T-E-N took people took the test. The second part of this sentence that I want to draw your attention to as a question of AP style is the word another. Is another the right word here? So let's go ahead and look up another. So here's the entry on another that explains how it's used. And, and it says, another is not a synonym for additional. It refers to an element that somehow duplicates a previous stated quantity. So you'll see in our example, 10 people took the test. Another 10 refused is correct because 10 and 10 are the same numbers. But it is, in fact, wrong to say 10 people took the test and another 20 refused because that's an inappropriate use of another. So we would rewrite it, 10 people took the test, 20 others refused. In our fourth example, we have the captain loved to eat french fries. First question we should look at always is capitalization on titles. So we have the captain, should that be capitalized? The first place we might look is under C. There doesn't seem to be an entry for captain, so I'm going to check the entry um, for capitalization. And you'll see there is a very long entry on capitalization because AP style is very specific. So let's look, we have capitalization, then we go to titles. Capitalize formal titles when used immediately before a name. Lowercase formal titles when used alone or in a construction that sets them off but from a name by commas. So in our example, captain should be lowercase. And we have the captain loved to eat french fries. Now we were always taught to capitalize the names of countries and languages, but the question is with french fries, do we actually capitalize that? So we could look up French in the A through Z, but if you'll remember, I mentioned that there is a food section. So let's go a little farther ahead to the food guidelines, where you can see everything is spelled out and how to properly say it. And in fact, French fries are lowercase because it refers to the style of cut, not the nation. See, you learn something new every day. And so let's look at our last example. Because of her race, she was tortured on the rack. And we don't usually use the word rack a lot in sentences, but the question is, is that the right way to spell that? So let's first look under W. See a long section on weather there. All right, so rack. See rack, rack. So now we go back to the R section. So here is the entry on the difference between rack and rack. The noun rack applies to various types of framework. The verb rack means to arrange on a rack to torture, to trouble, or torment. He was placed on the rack, she racked her brain. The noun rack with a W means ruin or destruction and is generally confined to the phrase rack and ruin and racked with doubt or pain. So in our sentence, she was tortured on the rack. That should in fact be R-A-C-K because it applies to the torture device.